Its impressive portfolio of MBA programs, not to mention the pandemic, isn't enough to keep Kellogg busy. It launched a whole new program at the beginning of this academic year. Let's catch up on what's new at Kellogg and learn about its new accelerated joint MBA at the intersection of business and technology management. Welcome to Admission Straight Talk, the podcast dedicated to graduate admissions and helping you approach the application process thoughtfully and successfully. Your host is Accepted's founder and world-renowned admissions guru, Linda Abraham. At Accepted, our mission is to get you to that unforgettable moment when you read your acceptance email and shout, yes, I'm in, confident you'll be attending the perfect program to help you launch the career of your dreams. Welcome to the 396th episode of Mission Straight Talk, Except It's Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get to our great guest, I want to introduce you to a resource that can really help you with the application essays you may be writing for your round two applications. That resource is Five Fatal Flaws to Avoid in Your MBA Application Essays. It can truly help you eliminate mistakes, errors, and misguided responses to application questions. Don't let your essays have these flaws download your free copy of Five Fatal Flaws to Avoid from exhibit.com slash 396 download. It gives me great pleasure to have back on Admission Straight Talk, Kate Smith, Assistant Dean of Admissions and Financial Aid at the Kellogg School of Management. Kate earned her own MBA at Kellogg in 1998 and then worked in marketing for leading brands, including General Mills, Quaker Oats, and Pepsi. She returned to Kellogg in 2012 and currently is Kellogg's Assistant Dean of Admissions and Financial Aid. Kate, Welcome to Admission Straight Talk. Thank you, Linda. My pleasure. Glad to have you back. Now, I'd like to start with some questions about the new program, the MBAI, and then move into more COVID and MBA-related topics. Is that okay? Oh, that sounds perfect. All right. So let's start with some real basic information about the MBAI. First of all, what is it? Who is it for? What's the structure? And what degree do graduates actually receive? Thank you for uh, opening on what is an exciting innovation here at Kellogg. We have just uh, introduced and added this new program in the Kellogg uh, portfolio of MBA options. So the MBAI is a new joint degree. It has uh, been launched by the Kellogg School of Management and the McCormick School of Engineering at Northwestern University. And the vision for this degree is that it is at the nexus point of business and technology management. Uh, the MBAI is building on a long legacy of innovation and, and collaboration between Kellogg and McCormick. Um, the two schools, uh, as you I, I know know, but others may not be aware of, uh, launched years ago a dual degree uh, called the Triple M program. Uh, which provides you know, rigorous business education integrated with a strong foundation in uh, design innovation. So the MBAI is a, a new specialized program that is meant uh, for students with, with um, prior undergraduate STEM experience uh, and or uh, prior work experience in the tech sector. So examples could be uh, having worked as a product manager, a data scientist, software engineer, R&D associate, we're going to be looking at building a, um, a, a, what I'd say is a real nice diversity of backgrounds in with leveraging tech and STEM uh, ex expertise so that they can bring that and contribute that on uh, a journey to accelerating their knowledge and foundational um, expertise in at this intersection of business and technology. So the design of this is it's gonna be a fast paced five quarter program, uh, which is I think uh, a, a very appealing in terms of the, the speed at which you can uh, pursue and complete your MBA degree experience and immediately jump into what is a rapidly evolving um, tech sector. So the curriculum will have um, an in, uh, will include the entire Kellogg MBA core curriculum, as well as technical courses in topics such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, data wrangling, robotics, uh, computational thinking for business. And that um, will also be complemented with the entire Kellogg MBA core curriculum. And so students will have the opportunities uh, to round out their degree with uh, just a few electives choosing between both Kellogg and McCormick. But this 
program is a is an intensive with a five quarter format as opposed to our two year program is a traditional six quarter program format. So you are, um, there's a little less flexibility on electives and more of a, a intentional design into the curriculum, um, integrating the, the aspects of data analytics, AI, et cetera, and weaving that throughout the curricular offerings. So the graduates will have one degree conferred by both Kellogg and McCormick. I am it's, actually, it's actually a shorter program than the, the conventional MBA program. You're gonna end up with two degrees, but it's a shorter program. It's actually a joint degree. So this is, yeah. so it's different than a dual degree. Right. So our current triple M is a dual degree, one degree conferred by McCormick, one de the MBA conferred by Kellogg. This is a joint MBA degree called okay. the MBAI conferred by us both together. Got it. And it is um, one quarter. Uh, so you're going to be going five quarters straight through. So you're gonna start in the fall, matriculate in the fall uh, quarter, and you're going to actually uh, take courses five consecutive quarters and graduate the following December. So you'll have a work immersion experience concurrent with actually taking um, fewer courses over the summer quarter. So you'll have something that's analogous to an internship. You will have an internship experience, but we're designing the, um, the curriculum in that summer window to allow you to pr progress. And you'll take a couple courses around flanking your internship over that summer quarter. Okay. And what about, um, when does it, when do they take, so the internship is over that summer quarter or it's the Correct. So it's the same timing as a traditional internship mm -hmm. window as our traditional two-year uh, offering or triple M students who all take a, 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 a pursue their internship over what is our summer quarter here at Kellogg. Mm -hmm. So the students will secure a summer internship that aligns with their interests. They will have the uh, support of our career uh, management center team. They'll have all the resources that, that they are a Kellogg student. So that's something to understand is they'll have all the resources of Kellogg available to them. They'll secure that internship. And if that internship happens to be in San Francisco, they will actually be able to attend. The San Francisco will be the base of the, of the offering of the curriculum over that summer quarter because we have a campus uh, base there. And, um, and if they are, let's say in New York or if they take a, an international internship option, they'll be working um, remote and we're able to leverage the, the beauty of this moment of um, asynchronous and synchronous uh, learning environments and hybrid environments. Sure. So they'll be able to attend the coursework over the summer around their internship. And then the entire cohort will culminate with an immersion experience in San Francisco at the end of the summer quarter together and experience that. And they'll be, um, be doing that out of our home base out of our San Francisco campus. Wow. Well, that's it's, it's, it's definitely a, a unique approach to um, immerse these students deep into this uh, AI tech sector is the goal. And so- But give them the business foundation. You got it. Exactly. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, how does it differ from the MBA with a focus on tech? I mean, couldn't I, I just get a two-year MBA and take a lot of high you know, tech courses? That is a great question. Uh, the difference here is we have intentionally uh, focused on, I'd say three aspects differentiate this uh, around the curriculum, the degree you're receiving that we touched on and the job uh, career opportunities that we believe are going to match with this program and the graduates of this program. So regarding the curriculum, it's going, you know, we see MBAI as the only top, um, MBA offering, it's coming one with this accelerated format, which is unique, um, but it's going to have this comprehensive offering of coursework and experience that wholly integrates AI and data and data analytics into and is woven throughout that entire curriculum. Every aspect of their journey through this is going to have that as a common core, as opposed to just taking a, a few electives that might be at the intersection of tech and, and business um, strategy, for example. So, um, you know, the MBAI graduates will have the degree we talked about conferred by Kellogg and McCormick. 
And we see that the graduates of MBAI will be well equipped to take leadership roles that are really at that intersection of science, technology, and business um, you know, within organizations where you could look at things such as like tech, um, technology product management, product digital marketing, uh, consulting roles that are very much looking to advance what's happening right down in data analytics and AI in, in trying to apply those uh, concepts into business organizations, um, trying to solve you know, real-time problems and leveraging technology. This is one of those where the industry is evolving so rapidly and what is happening in this space is moving at such a speed. The, the sort of the inspiration that I think uh, brought our two schools together to form and offer this degree was the identification of a, a, the need to kind of go next level depth on technology no, uh, knowledge, if you will, among business leaders. And that's so right like the management now, of data, it seems to be. It will definitely be a, a key component of the curriculum and the experience that students have. So if you are interested in technology and want to have what I'd call a more traditional MBA experience, you, I would say select the two-year program. We have a tech management pathway. Um, you can take courses where you can handpick those electives. You know, um, there are a whole host of options that we offer here at Kellogg that would allow you to, to build that. You have your MBA foundation. Um, you'd have a traditional like summer internship without this more fast paced approach. And it would um, be more like a marriage of those two areas. Whereas this is, a, I'd say like a full integration Mm -hmm. of AI and technology into the curricular experience within um, the MBA I that we're offering. So just to make sure I have a straight go, I might be repeating what you, some of what you've said, the, the core is the same core that MBA students take, right? It is not. It will it's be the not. same core. No, it is this, let me rephrase. It will be the same core, but that, but those courses are going to have integrated data, technology, AI, principles woven throughout that entire core. Okay. So it's really for this cohort. That's core exactly, for this co yes, cohort. Yes. Got it. So, so while that's, you are, that's you're, a big difference. It, that exactly. And so I'm trying to uh, get that to be clear. I appreciate you helping me um, navigate the explanation of that. It is designed uniquely for the MBA cohort. Got it. They will travel together as a cohort. They will experience these classes and they will have unique components that do not just sit side by side. They're not identical to what the traditional MBA courses today offer. And is that also a distinction between the MMM? Correct. So the, well, the triple M's actually are getting an MBA from Kellogg right. and, an, and a master's of science in design innovation from McCormick. So they actually integrate and do take the the same core classes with yeah. our two Y students. So that is a delineated difference. The other component is the, the Masters of Science and Design Innovation is much more about human-centered uh, design thinking principles, you know, the application to innovation, entrepreneurship. So there's a, there's a divergence there that is uniquely um, separate in the McCormick offerings. So one of the questions I had when I, when I first heard about the MBAI was the MBAI is so focused on the impact of artificial intelligence, data analysis, machine learning. It's that's on one hand, it's an area of tech that's going to impact everything. On the other hand, it's a very narrow area of, of, of tech. Why did Kellogg limit it in this way, as opposed to having a program that is more broadly about tech management? Um, I think that's a great question. I think Kellogg believes that AI and analytics hold tremendous promise for the future of where business and organizations are evolving. And, you know, yet we, we've seen this, um, the challenges that many organizations are facing today in figuring out how to deliver and scale successful business outcomes. And so the failure, so what inspired this to be a more, you know, I'd say laser focused offering was, you know, this, uh, as, they, as we assessed it, you know, one, one example I can provide is the failure rate of AI and analytics projects was cited to be about 85%. Wow, two, really? Two years ago. Yeah, Gartner is a prominent research firm. 
they had studied studies saying, you know, the failure rate today, like the concept is there, but the application is still very much being figured out by organizations. And, um, you know, we believe that businesses need to be able to adapt and course correct this to achieve a much higher level of success. So they need, you know, new decision making processes, culture uh, shifts that might be necessary, uh, new organizational structures. And making these changes, you know, requires leaders who will have expertise in both business and technology. And we've made, you know, this delineation in saying that we believe the MBA I program will develop future leaders who can drive successful business outcomes through the adoption of AI technology and innovation. And the belief set that this is going to be a expansively growing area that is worth, you know, um, being laser focused on developing. Our intention is actually to have a cohort that is probably no larger than our triple M cohort in this program, which is typically, you know, um, the triple M program typically runs about 65 students a year. So this is, that also gives you that example of it is a narrower space, right. but one that we think will have a ton of, uh, you know, interesting development potential. And we've also seen the interest you know, growing in terms of students wanting to to drive in this direction. So, um, you know, if you're interested in this more um, immersive uh, area with the AI intersection and in business, we think it's going to be a, a very exciting program for applicants to explore. The applicability of it is endless. I mean, it's one of those where, yeah. you know, Professor um, Anderson, Eric Anderson, is the is the director building out this program here at Kellogg. And he has had many, many conversations with organizations about this to inform our strat strategic decision to enter this space, as well as what kinds of roles are organizations looking to hire into. And the conversations have actually said, been, it has, a quote was, some of the jobs have not even been created yet. They are being conceived as we speak, being like fleshed out, trying to determine like, how do we start to create new roles that will drive advancement in our organizations and leverage uh, this technology? Yeah, wow. Well, okay. You convinced me. How can I apply? <laughs> Uh, well, you can come to our website and uh, look at our application. It's live. Um, our round two deadline is uh, open and posted. It's uh, January 6th of 2021. Uh, on the application, you'll, um, you'll see it, this is a Kellogg MBA program. So we are going to apply the same um, approach to evaluating who makes a great student for Kellogg. And there's an and for this group in that we expect them to have some of that prior, you know, certainly demonstrated interest in technology, um, data analytics, uh, background in, in a range of areas. We talked about the STEM background would be considered. Um, and, and the idea here is that you want people who are passionate about this opportunity in the intersection of both uh, leading at the intersection of business and technology. So the application will have our traditional um, components, uh, Kellogg's uh, two essay questions, which are both about leadership and um, about values that we um, care about in our community. And then a third essay question for MBAI candidates, which is in and around um, being able to talk about experience that you've seen in the disconnect that currently exists between business and technology. That has been a fundamental issue, I think, for many that they're navigating is the two worlds have sort of grown up side by side and organizations are trying to merge and understand how to bring those two together with leaders who can traverse both the business strategy and the technology development that their organizations are, are facing. Um, there's also uh, an opportunity for applicants to share information about their their skills and their experience in um, coding, for example, or background in technology that they that they could bring to the to the class, and so they'll have an opportunity to share those aspects in the application. So, in that, do they need to take a GMAT or a GRE? Do they, you know, I assume they need uh, good grades and uh, all that good stuff. Recommendations. That's right. So resume. You, you've covered it all. The traditional <laughs> traditional components of an application are all there. So you're going to submit a resume. You're going to um, answer the essay questions. 
You're going to fill out some short responses on your background, your work experience, organizations you've been involved with, uh, two letters of recommendation. Um, we will um, have interviews that we will hold with the, the, the candidates. Um, and Kellogg uniquely also has a video essay component. Sure. So there's just, you know, every aspect that is a part of our traditional application is there for the MBAI applicant as well. In addition to the STEM background, which is more specific to the, to the yes. MBAI. Okay. Yes. Can applicants apply, like, let's say I'm really interested in the MBAI and I'm really interested in the Kellogg MBA. Can I apply to more than one? I mean, you have quite a menu of programs. Kellogg is unique in that we have designed over many, many years uh, a, a approach to the MBA, which is uh, uh, many choices, you know, and yeah, how you can- It's a menu. You, it is a portfolio of choice in how you pursue your MBA. So we have two working professional programs, our evening weekend program, your executive MBA program. Within the full-time program, we have the traditional two-year the one-year program, which is giving you credit for prior business um, coursework completed before you matriculate. And then we already have touched on, we have two dual degrees with the triple M and the JD MBA program. And now we've added the MBAI. So what we ask our applicants is you can only apply to one program in, in the cycle you're applying in the, in the application cycle. And the reason we've uh, constructed it that way is we want students to do the reflection, their homework on what's the right choice for you because they are uniquely designed to meet different students at different intersections of interest, um, experience, et cetera. So in the one Y program, there's no, there's no internship, you know? Right. So, right? so there's these differences that are intentional in their design. And we want students to understand that as they apply. So if a candidate were in a position where my number one choice, I want to go to Kellogg for the MBAI, but if I weren't admitted, I would love to get a Kellogg MBA. You can let us know that either in the interview or in the, um, we have the additional, you can share additional information um, portion of the application. Mm -hmm. You can say, I would love to be in this program. This is my number one choice. But if that weren't, to play out, please know I am so interested in Kellogg. I would like this as, to, because, you know, so that we're aware, but I encourage candidates to really do their homework on applying and knowing it and not just make that the, the default response for all. Right, right, I, right. That is to me a unique student who says, I have decided that Kellogg is where I wanna be. And here's the rank order of what, you know, I'd love to be considered for. And we have at times, contacted an applicant who applied to one program and actually had the conversation and said, you know what, I know you applied to this program, but your profile looks like you'd be great for this program. Had you thought of that? And sometimes they hadn't, sometimes they haven't been aware, sometimes they had. And so we, we definitely engage with applicants in that conversation if that unique situation arises. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Very you, well. you anticipated that one. Let's, let's, uh, turn for a moment to the Kellogg MBA experience today, okay? There's this gorgeous background behind you and I've visited the magnificent campus uh, that, you, that you enjoy at Kellogg. How have the corona restrictions affected the MBA experience and program at Kellogg? For any, for the, you know, the, let's talk about the full-time programs primarily. Yeah, it, as, as you know, Linda, Linda and I were talking before we began the podcast, it is, a unique moment for us all. Yeah. Everyone is dealing with the pandemic in their own unique challenges and struggles and ways uh, as it unfolds. And so similar to the uh, adaptations that I believe every person has had to make, Kellogg um, was very nimble and we really quickly um, made adjustments to deliver our educational offerings safely with the impact of COVID-19. And I'm thrilled to share that we have been able to deliver our full-time program in a full hybrid format. We pivoted to virtual in the middle of March when kind of everything in the United States shut down immediately. And shortly thereafter, we're able to pivot to a full hybrid um, experience for students 
starting with Kellogg's Unique and that our one year in Triple M students start in the summer. So we uh, were able to start in a hybrid format and have been able to maintain that hybrid format, which means we have students attending in person and um, virtually. And uh, students can choose if they want to be in person or virtual, um, depending on their circumstances. And we have a handful of some virtual only courses that have also been offered. Um, but our classrooms, we went in and we, the beauty of the Global Hub that you just talked about um, actually has really enabled us to bring in students in a way we hadn't anticipated because the requirements of social distancing in a traditional um, fixed classroom environment put some pretty significant constraints where you're often facing about a quarter to at most a third, usually around 25% capacity in those fixed classrooms. Well, when we built this up, we built a lot of um, modular, flexible classrooms and it has just paid out in spades. So we've been able to, every student has um, in those classrooms, because we have both um, fixed and modular and they've been able to have their own table, We've been able to, you know, the, the faculty are able to be at the front of the room. Um, we're actually able to, the technology is so advanced because the hub is so new that we're able to um, include all the virtual students in the dialogue. So they're on screen um, in, interacting with the students in the classroom. So it has been, um, we've taken a very intentional approach to designing that classroom experience as well as the co-curricular co experiences mm -hmm. with a, a very important focus on trying to dissolve the barriers that are presented in this moment by whether you're in person or virtually involved. Um, Can you give an example? Um, you know, so uh, for example, um, uh, designing um, experiences for the students where they'll break out into Zoom breakout rooms, right? So now it's like you were in the classroom but if you're in the classroom and one of your um, you know, classmates is not, we can bring you together in a, in a virtual breakout room to have a breakout conversation like you would have, might have had if we were breaking out in the classroom. We also um, have been able to, uh, you know, we've made some innovations. Uh, the faculty have uh, started offering virtual office hours so that they can provide the same access to students that is harder to achieve with the constraints of um, physical proximity and whether you're uh, comfortable coming in or not, because we've given everyone the choice on how they want to attend in this moment. Um, you know, so for example, Professor Harry Kramer, uh, who teaches uh, managerial leadership at Kelly, he's the former CEO of Baxter. He has now stood up, you know, conversations with students both before and after class. And he just says, I'm going to be there early. Come on in if you want to talk to me. And it's, you know, it's like replicating the I'm here early for class experience. Sure. Um, we've also been able to bring in, um, you know, video content. So a lot of the faculty have started to pivot uh, in this moment and integrate asynchronous video to help um, present concepts outside of the class time. And then in the class, be able to enable the dialogue. So just to, the video platform has definitely opened some opportunity areas. The other example I'd give is um, we have, we're very aware that the organic um, community that you would have by being in the hub, the global hub altogether, yeah. the hallway chats, the bumping into each other at lunch, um, you, know, you know, we're getting coffee, whatever it might be. Those aren't there. In, in an organic fashion right now at the same level, obviously. So we've introduced pods where we've, and we're gonna you know, rotate students through pods. So they have a chance of with like six or seven to eight classmates to come together and meet virtually, but to have smaller group conversations that at least try to give them some of that experience. And by rotating that with students that might not, you know, that might've just enjoyed those organic moments together. In, in yeah. the so lots of, trying to be nimble and innovate to, to create, to deliver on what is central to how important collaboration and community is at Kellogg. Right, right. Well, it sounds, it's fascinating. It sounds like you're, again, I think the hardest thing to, to duplicate is, is the serendipitous meeting. And it sounds like you're trying as hard as possible to do it. Very much so. I was just talking to um, 
a student yesterday and, and they're also doing it where, you know, we have highly um, involved clubs and really? curricular opportunities at Kellogg. And, and she was talking about one club where the same thing they brought together. If you kind of realizing that, like, if you get to a certain threshold of students in a Zoom room or people in a Zoom room, it gets a little hard to have yeah. those conversations. So they've had that same approach where it's like we put four or five of us together and we had some um, topics, but each of us broke out and had talked about the same topics. And then we all came back together and people shared some of what their groups share, you know? So it's, it's really trying to build that connection and community and students creating that on their own, as well as us creating it in the, the curricular offerings mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Yeah. In light of the pandemic and the crazy end to last year's admission cycle, which I think you described as never ending, are you, are you going to read applications with a slightly different perspective this year around? Are you going to be looking or weighing differently certain qualities and attributes than, than you did before the pandemic? You know, the, the current environment has challenged all aspects of our lives, all of us. Yeah. Um, we know that this moment is actually going to inspire and, and likely curate qualities that we admire and value <laughs> in our student population, right? Resilience, yeah. um, leadership, all of the aspects of, of uh, being able to innovate, adapt, and, and face these challenges. So at Kellogg, we look to build empathetic leaders who are both creative and collaborative. And, and we know that many of these attributes will come shining through, I think, as they talk about experiences from that are influenced by the past year. Um, our admission standards and, and criteria have not changed. So we're not gonna be evaluating, I'd say differently, but we'll be evaluating with empathy, understanding what the you know, Canada is sharing in terms of the impact that this has had on, on them and, and their life. We actually um, pivoted. We have three video essay questions that are each a one minute response from, um, from students. So I kind of almost call it like a quick elevator pitch response to a question, right? Um, and we, we were looking, you know, the summer, our application had already was basically like going live as the mm. pandemic was hitting, right? So I said, how could we allow them to share? Well, no, we'll hear it in the interviews. When we get to the point of interviewing candidates, we'll hear about their experiences. But we also pivoted and adapted our video essay, um, uh, their third video essay, so that they can share how this year uniquely has challenged them and how they faced this challenge. We just wanted to give them a place and an opportunity to share it um, and I think it will possibly show up in essays and in interviews, you know, if someone has been impacted in their career, um, you know, with a disruption to, to working, you know, we completely understand that. So, you know, do, everybody's been impacted in different ways. And, and I think that will come uh, shining through as, as candidates are presenting themselves in their applications. I also tell candidates when they're responding to those questions, it's not just how they were impacted or affected it's how they responded that's right how did you deal with it you know like how did you face the challenge was the right. actual question we ask um so very much so and i think you've you've highlighted uh in terms of how the students at Kellogg have responded to the changed learning environment that initiative is important definitely so. i mean many of us are you know, just working from a, an apartment or from home, um, wherever you might live, or maybe you were, where you lived was disrupted. So you had to relocate to somewhere else because of different circumstances. Um, so how do you drive and make an impact in the organizations or the um, areas of your life that you're involved in in this moment? You know, um, we're all doing it differently in so many ways because of the constraints we're all facing. So, but the world is moving forward and are you helping that world advance in ways that are benefiting the greater good of all of us? Now, one of the challenges that have, at one point it was a big challenge and it became a lesser challenge and still depends kind of where, where you are in the world is taking the GRE or the GMAT. Now, Kellogg still requires one or the other, correct? What, are there any plans to go test optional, do you know? Um, is that something that's being considered? And what if you're in a country where it's very hard to get to the exam? 
Well, Kellogg took a stance of high levels of empathy at the end of last year because the world was so disrupted. And we know that that is still, there are still circumstances where that is the case. We did assess and do believe that access to testing has really um, been addressed for the majority of circumstances. It might be, it might take you longer. There's some, you know, like constraints to get the, the tests um, access that you would like. And as a result, we are, we did make the decision to, to keep the test requirements in our application for this year. Um, and we have given applicants an extension in each round to submit the score later than the deadline. So you can submit your application around two, deadline of January 6th without the test score um, and let us know. And we've, you know, um, we'll work with a candidate if they are unable to obtain it, we would allow you to roll your application forward into round three and you'll just continue to be considered through this cycle. We will assess what access to testing is available by, by the, you know, round three is in the summer. So in the uh, spring to summer months. So by then we'll assess, where are we? Um, and we do not, you know, right now we don't have any plans to make material changes. We're just assessing as we go all the, um, the circumstances facing candidates. And so our hope for is with the access really improving. And I'm hearing from the testing organizations that they're really getting close to 90% plus access again. Um, not necessarily like it, it could take longer, but at least right. the test, the test um, access has, has materially improved. So um, we're going to just keep our finger on the pulse of how okay. that plays out. All right. Can you touch for a second on Kellogg's Deferred Admissions Program for Future Leaders? Sure. It's also fairly new. It is. Not quite as new as the MBAI, but still, we can call it new. But it, it was year one for us last year. So you're yeah, right. That's what I thought. Only, only year two. Okay. So Kellogg Future Leaders is uh, Kellogg's deferred enrollment um, option. It's it's open to all undergraduates um, from anywhere, not just those from Northwestern University. It's open to all. And it, either undergraduates or master's candidates with uh, no prior work experience. So the expectation is, is you've completed uh, undergraduate or immediately thereafter master's, typically a one-year master's kind of candidate profile with no significant period of work experience. And the idea is that you're applying with the option to enroll in a future term. And Kellogg is uh, flexible in offering, you can enroll anywhere between two and five years after you are admitted and you'll specify what year you're preferring to start when you apply. Um, and what's nice about Kellogg is, you know, the one thing for these candidates, and this is um, being offered by, you know, many different MBA programs today, um, Kellogg having this unique portfolio of option, we're going to, uh, we've structured it just to keep it sort of straightforward that you're applying to the two-year program, which is the most traditional uh, program we have. But let's say you want to enroll four years from now, you love the job that you have and you've reassessed whether you want to go full time. Well, we would let you pivot that offer into our evening weekend program. Or you could say, I am interested now in this MBA, right? Uh, because of the path I've pursued and I really want to go in that direction. So we will allow you to communicate an interest in one of our alternative programs and work with you to determine if that's the right fit at that moment. So, um, you know, it, it, to us, I think hopefully really provides the flexibility of no one knows what the future looks like for themselves, right? Um, <laughs> but the option that they know they can pursue their MBA at Kellogg. So we were very, very pleased with our first uh, year um, of the program, it was great, great candidates. So it's exciting. How many were admitted with with that program? Um, I don't have the the numbers like right at my fingertips in total, okay. total, but um, it, they'll be spread out over the two, three, four, five years. So you don't anticipate there'll be a huge percent of the total class each year. Um, but by the but when they matriculate, they're going to have the same requisite experience as any other. Sure, sure. So, so to me, they'll just fold right into the to the program. Okay. And, and if they are admitted through that program, they could go to the MBA, JD, the triple M. We'll work them. with them. We'll work so with them. It's not, it's not going to be a, just a, yes, you can. It's going to be a, are you the, is that a good fit option for you? But we will have that conversation and work with the candidate. 
Sure. And if it is a good fit option for their background and like with the MBAI requirements, I can't just carte blanche say yes, because we're trying to look for that technology experience. But if you actually develop that experience on the way, you might be a great candidate to, to consider that. So we will work with each candidate one-on-one -on -one uniquely. Okay. What advice would you give to someone thinking of ahead to a full 20, 2021 application? In other words, next cycle or later? I, you know, the, the um, advice I usually give is to really invest the energy to get to know the schools that you're considering, um, that you're applying. Uh, it, it's just like, you know, taking a, a new role in an organization, a new job. You want to know that you're going to enjoy that experience, that you're going to thrive, that it's going to give you the development that you desire, right? So, my recommendation and advice is to, to do the homework to get to know the school. So at Kellogg, you can, we have a preview Kellogg website you can check out. Um, you, can, um, you, you can learn, you know, we have virtual events that you can attend. So you could um, join a student. We have small student group chats right now available that you can sign up for. So you can talk to current students. We have master classes being taught um, by faculty that you could um, experience. So, uh, and we also have a virtual tour option in a world where it's hard for anyone to visit any campus anywhere, um, trying to provide, you know, students with the opportunity and applicants with the opportunity to like get the, the visit experience that unfortunately is not easily accessible to anyone right now. So right. talking to current students, talking to alumni, learning about the program, that is my advice. Great. All right. Thank you very much. What would you have liked me to ask you? Um, I think, um, you know, I mentioned already the, the virtual campus experience. So that investment in, in getting to know us, I think like taking the time for doing some self-reflection for any candidate who's listening to this podcast, they're likely considering pursuing their MBA. So take the time to like learn and reflect and, and, and identify like what your goals and motivations are. And then that, that conversation I just had um, around uh, why an MBA pro program is a good program for you. I mean, I think being able to have people really think and reflect on their motivations and where they're gonna thrive, which I just mentioned it a second ago, um, is what I, I always want people to kind of take it down a notch from people get kind of caught up in worrying about, will I get in? Uh, what about the impact of, of other factors? Control what you can control, which is you. And that, that process of reflection, you know, getting excited and passionate about what you want to do, having those conversations, and then just going for it. Um, you know, I, I like to, to have that conversation with any applicant because you'll find a great program for you. And, and we certainly every year see exceptional students who find that fit here at Kellogg. And I certainly hope that that is the case for anyone who's uh, engaged in, in the time of listening to us today. I hope so too. I'm sure they will, because I think you've provided some great information. So Kate, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Where can listeners and potential applicants learn more about Kellogg's array, portfolio of programs, and specifically the MBAI? Sure. You can go to www.kellogg.northwestern.edu. Thanks again, Kate. We're going to include links in the show notes at accepta.com slash 396 to the site that Kate just mentioned, as well as to directly to the MBAI site and to related articles and interviews. They are all linked to at exhibit.com slash 396. Quick reminder, don't blow your application essays by making the five mistakes revealed in five fatal flaws to avoid in your MBA application. Download this free guide to learn what they are and how to eliminate them from your application. Snag your copy, exhibit.com slash 396 download. Listener, thank you too again for joining Kate Smith and me for our 396 episode. If you found this show helpful, I have a favor to ask. Please share your thoughts. Just go to lovepodcast.com slash AST. Again, that URL is lovepodcast.com slash AST. And you'll be able to rate and review the show on iTunes and other leading podcast sites. Doing so helps potential listeners find us and is very much appreciated. 
Thanks again for coming. This is Admission Straight Talk produced by Accepted, and I am your host, Linda Abraham. I'll talk to you again next week.